Welcome to another episode of Real Talk. My name is Nicole Asinogo, and today I am at BL Restaurant, here to meet with some really cool people for another dose of Real Talk. Join me. On this episode, we have fast rising musician, Falada. Eze Gozie Eze, the country manager for Universal Studios West Africa, and singer-songwriter, Niniola. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really like beer. Beer's not my, hey my guys. thing. Hi. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Good, how are you? Good, 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 good. How's everyone? Fine, right. thank you. Cool. So today, I'm sure you guys can kind of guess what the topic is. Mm. I can't. No. No? Okay, well, two women, both in music, mm-hmm. one man in the music industry. Mm-hmm. So today we're going to be talking about women in music. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Do we all agree that like the Nigerian music industry is like quite male dominated? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> she agreed very grudgingly. Yeah. yeah. How important is talent in the music industry right now? How do we ask as to go I mean, in general, talent is 10%. 10%? 10% max. I mean, the truth is, it's a, it's a music business at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So if you as an artist understand more and more about the business side, it makes making music easier. Mm-hmm. So if you know that, okay, you as an artist want to break into Germany, for example, you work in reverse. You look at where you want to enter and then you work backwards from there. It's really, talent can only take you so far. Mm-hmm. On the outside, what you see is, oh, talent, oh, looking, you know, fancy and all of that. But when you come into the industry, you realize that bills have to be paid mm-hmm. and nothing comes for free. Yeah. You have to keep pushing and pushing. Mm-hmm. It's nobody's business why, you know, you're dropping songs like, you know, they're not beating the previous songs. But yeah. It's nobody's business. I will be a dissenting voice, though. Okay. I think strong, good talent coupled with like a strong team yeah. makes so much more of a difference versus just having no talent there. Like I think I agree that it's just 10%, but when you actually have something, something different, something of value to offer people, it changes. And we can talk about this in any industry, in technology, and there's how yeah. many different types of phones, but when yeah. you make something that speaks to a lifestyle, that yeah. speaks yeah. to people, yeah. that, that, that product will go farther. How do you balance like cultural expectations that come with being a woman with your career in the industry? Um, First of all, I think whenever, and I'm going to speak very just objectively, whenever your image is not a true reflection of who you are, it's always going to be very difficult for you. Um, So making sure that your image is is naturally from who you are, it's easier, and the person you would marry would would have to accept who you are when it's something that's necessarily maybe fabricated. Mm -hmm. That's when you might have yeah. issues but even that like I might decide to cut off all my hair tomorrow and start you know singing rock music okay. and I would <laughs> hope is this hypothetical or is this, <laughs> <laughs> or is this a plan? you know I'm just I think I think there's a, I think as women we also have it more challenging because our image and our bodies are very much interconnected in a way that you might not see it in the same way for men mm-hmm. and I think that's really like people the way women's bodies are sexualized um, in entertainment in general. My p- perspective is to be myself, you yeah. know, and being myself will attract the husband that is going to like me for who I am. Yeah. And then yeah. he won't have that disconnect. Mm-hmm. And then when you're evolving as an artist, it's a, like a natural progression and your label won't be coming to you and saying, do this, do that. When it comes to music, uh, I think you have to make a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. And as a woman, um, when you have fans and they idolize you, you want them to see you that way for a very long time okay. until you cross the mark and then you can go ahead and change, maybe have a baby yeah. or get married. But mm. when you start out and people start loving you, you belong to them. Mm. So it would be, be very hard for them to see you otherwise. Yeah. And, and if you life. make that yeah. drastic change, all they'll do is switch to the next person. And excuse me, your label has spent a whole lot they need, you know, the turnover, they need their returns. Okay, so you like, can't yeah, just go, yeah. you, <laughs> can't just, you can't just go ahead and, you know, just make life decisions like that yeah. that will affect the business. For Beyonce, she had to get to that point, you know, yeah. where regardless, people will still love her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but why didn't she do it earlier? She had a boyfriend. She had someone who was going to die for her or kill for her, but she didn't until she crossed that mark. Mm-hmm. And look at it again. She had the first baby and gave it years again. Yeah. before she had the second because whether you like it or not 
the industry in a way controls us and there's nothing you want to make money so it really comes down to how you plan how you plan two of you made the most valid points that collectively work for everyone yeah depending on where you are in your career mm -hmm. right um but at the end of the day your this is work it's your passion but it's also work, work it's yeah. putting food on the table for you yeah right so if you decide from the onset that you know what you're going to give music three years you know you're going to want you want to get married in four years yeah. you want to have a child in five years as you plan it out, everything else, your team's job is to plug into those places. You, you said it's your choice, right? And you touched on something about um, knowing yourself and authenticity. Do you think that um, a lot of female musicians out right now um, are authentic to themselves? For me, for instance, I'm an introvert. Mm -hmm. When I'm in my house, I'm not wearing makeup, mm -hmm. I'm not wearing no wig, nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, but the thing is, is it is work. When work, when it's time to work, mm -hmm. I'm somebody else on stage. Nobody's forcing me to be that. Mm -hmm. Like she said, alter ego doesn't mean that it's not authentic. It's like a completely different theory, but I <laughs> think that the closer you are to your true self, the easier it would be to, to have that longevity in your career. Mm -hmm. Or you find a way to transition out of that space. Yeah. So if you know that, okay, you want to get married in a year, year and a half, mm -hmm. start to transition into the artist that you want to be mm -hmm. and carry your fans along. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the issue comes when it becomes so abrupt and you know, it's just, your fans are just as confused as you are. Like, <laughs> you're saying surprised, I'm married. Yeah, yeah, and you're surprised as well. You're surprised. <laughs> so who's actually guiding who? Yeah. You know? What about competition in the industry? Like, how competitive are females in the industry? Like, is there a lot of collaboration between female artists? You touched on something. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> <laughs> the women in this industry don't work together. They, they don't, don't work together. They don't really see eye to eye. They don't I even hang speak. out. They mm. don't even... I will speak for myself. Mm. <clears throat> they, don't, they don't hang out. They don't... In front of the camera. <laughs> oh, like, hi, how are you? Is there no you sisterhood of, you know... Colla Let me speak about musically. Let mm -hmm. me approach this from music. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. If I'm going to collaborate with someone, like, obviously, for me, musically, like, I, I want to... It makes it... Sometimes it's organic, which I guess would attest if you're naturally organically mm -hmm. in the same space, those mm -hmm. things would happen. Mm -hmm. But I also think that like I don't, some people approach um, collaborations very scientifically. Like this makes sense because you want this, yes, this, this you yeah. want, you know, yeah, yeah. I at this point have not really approached collaborations that way. Again, percentages, like the probability, like if you look at the percentage of like male artists to female artists who are like making a certain amount of money or dominating a certain way, mm -hmm. and then like look at the pool of, and then who you can collaborate within yeah. that space, like there's, the likelihood of a female female collaboration is less likely just based on statistics not not statistics, on probability yeah, yeah. not okay. and i think it's kind of unfair to say to us oh we don't like to collaborate with each other that we are you know <laughs> so we don't like so each other we're not from like that's not even yeah. fair like I speak for myself okay <laughs> <laughs> um shay shay put me on a song on her song and it's called juba okay it was fun and i think it's about um was having that platform to come together, like you were mm, saying off mm. camera, that we don't meet and talk. Because if you don't meet someone one on one, the you likelihood of you know working together, yeah. you know, like yeah. it won't happen. We had fun in the studio, had the little fights, you know, here and there. Mm. But at the end of the day, you know, we 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 did the song mm. and it came out. And sometime, maybe two weeks ago, we had an event. And I was singing, she came on stage, and we had a lovely time with chatting, and the crowd enjoyed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we should, you know, have more of that. Yeah, definitely. You yeah. know, but definitely. if we don't come together, you know, and, you know, talk, yeah. you know, yeah. and laugh yeah. and hang out, yeah. this mm -hmm. will not happen. Yeah. Because we're women naturally, yeah. Yeah. and women mind their business. And we're very protective of ourselves mm -hmm. because we don't want unnecessary wahala, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. But when you when you sit down with somebody and you have a conversation you tend to understand that okay this is business mm -hmm. you know because believe you me um she's fans love the music and mm. some of her fans you know started loving me some of my fans they love mm -hmm. loving yeah. her and you yeah. know so at the end of the day we're bridging you know yeah all that gap mm -hmm. so yeah just it's about just having a space to meet i think once you have like one one-on-one -on -one with someone you mm -hmm. get to understand them as a person yeah. mm -hmm. um you decide whether or not okay where do i store this person can we potentially become friends or is this just yeah. you know an acquaintance mm -hmm. you know um but at the end of the day like i said when you take it back to um the business side of it it's you're networking exactly you know yeah. in the same way yeah. if you had a job you would you would still network whether yeah. or not 
you know if you'll necessarily click with these people uh -huh. or not. But once you, what, it's better to meet someone and know, you know what, this person, I, I don't really, really yeah, yeah, than to have like a preset the notion gig. of how that person uh -huh. is. If you could um, put out a female musician right now mm -hmm. into the scene, what do you think would be like, <laughs> boom, this girl will blow? Like, what is missing from the females out there right now mm -hmm. that you think um, would be marketable to this market? That's a great question. Thank you. Um, <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> for me, the music I listen to, I don't listen to pop. I'm like... When I say pop, I mean Afro pop, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Not Afro beats, Afro pop. Um, because it's not, it doesn't have any longevity. Mm -hmm. So the female artists that I do listen to are creating music that is very niche. And the problem is that we don't have a, a, what I feel is a full on authentic pop proposition in Nigeria yet. Okay. The authenticities are the outliers, the afro soul jazz house mm. those vibes but the pop proposition never comes out authentic because mm. a lot of times they allow the market to dictate what they do or who they become mm -hmm. instead of you becoming the trend instead mm. of you you know pretty much setting the pace mm. yeah you know, and i um, think in nigeria i think people forget that in every other industry there's diversity in the market mm -hmm. Yeah. Like this whole make one sound, like it just boggles my mind. Yeah. If you don't have enough artists making, making the a, a sound, that genre will not grow. It cannot become mm. the genre. Like and if yeah. you're going to have like a house, Afro house yeah. radio station to make sure that we get the representation that we need on mm. the airways, the only way for that to happen is if there's multiple artists. We decided to take Real Talk to the streets. First of all, there is this societal thing on women. They don't blow on time. You have to like get to a certain stage in your life where you are completely free from your parents and your church and everybody. Tiwa started at 27. And then Simi left church music for secular music at around the same age. She gets so, but we skipped them since like 17. They've been, I mean, balling and making sense. And then, you know, this has come with experience. And for you to gather experience within that short time, ugh. I mean, girls, we have an industry making, making music. What, what would a lady sing about? Most, it's, it's even crazy when I hear a lady sings about guys that I love. It sounds so to me, I'm like. Right. Now we can make comparisons of those of them that are a little bit quite decent when it comes to dressing and those of them that are a little bit rugged. I think they should show the skin because it, it will um, hasten their, um, the popularity and everything. It makes it work better for them than just covering up. So I was talking to a female artist and she, she made quite a bold statement saying that um, the reason why um, a lot of female artists haven't blown is because they haven't given in to some sort of like sexual advances from certain like producers or directors to get their songs out there. Has there, do you, do you agree that, or is it possible that there are some people's careers that have been stunted because of that? Sorry, but just before any of you answer this, it's the same thing on the men, on the male side of it as well. People don't talk about it, but it's just as <laughs> it's even crazier, to be honest. Okay. It's even crazier. Mm. Um, Give us the tea. I don't know. There's no tea to be. <laughs> <laughs> But it's the type of industry that we're in. Yes, and it's it's not even just Nigeria; it's worldwide. Mm -hmm. Whether it's man, woman, whatever it is, if people are in a certain position of power and they feel that they, they can hold that power over you, they will use it. Okay. So it's up to you whether you decide: are you going to succumb to this, or are you going to just be true to yourself? And <laughs> no one can block. See, no one can stop good music. Mm -hmm. mm. No matter how long it takes, yeah. your music will enter as long as it's good. So I've heard this many times um, that how come there's only one popping female artist like globally? Do you think the world is ready for multiple um, African female artists? You mean from Nigeria specifically? From Nigeria specifically. I even disagree with the like we have to define the word popping. Mm. Um, if we're looking at I it, I mean, popping, mm -hmm. like popular, popular, I would say. And popular, popular. where? Because there's certain artists that are popular in other places that mm -hmm. might not necessarily have the same airplay here, but doesn't mean they're not yeah. as popular. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's like yeah. popping is such an interesting what? word yeah. because yeah. you have to know yeah. what, we're, what are we talking, what about? Are we talking yeah. about. And then, like, here's a perfect example that I saw this you can look at artists making money from touring, from ad publishing, uh -huh. from record sales, from sp um, streaming, and the artists that might be popping mm -hmm. I have a lot of streams but they might not have as much publishing mm -hmm. you have an artist who's killing publishing yep. but doesn't really have a lot of you know true, true, and they yeah. might do really people who do publishing true. and touring do really well so yeah. that 
People don't understand that when you talk about the business of things, yeah. people forget that, okay, my goal is just for everyone to know who I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But fun, sometimes if you look at it from a business perspective, yeah. you'll mm -hmm. see that. This po popping word is even, not even has nothing. It does not correlate that. with Instagram followers. It does not correlate no, it doesn't. with. That's um, what people don't understand. It doesn't. It, it doesn't yeah, at all. it doesn't correlate <laughs> yeah. with Twitter followers. It doesn't correlate with. At the end of the day, it's like how your music is being leveraged to generate revenue. That is popping in yeah. my, you know. And I agree. Be, I totally agree. With yeah, that. like how many times yeah. I get called to perform live, you yeah. know, but people might not know. It's true. Yeah. What, what is she doing? Nobody knows. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm singing. True. You know, so no, that's, that's, see, the thing is in Nigeria we, we mistake popping with being hyped. Mm. Hype is not anything of substance. Hype comes and goes, it's fleeting, it's not stable, it's, it's not stationary. Yeah. So you have artists like you said who on the back end everything is in order, publishing is there, yeah. my royalties, whether it's from UK, <laughs> from the US, wherever, yeah. it's coming in steadily. And then you have yeah. the artists that are spending the millions to be the most visible. But on the back end, they only wrote and two words in their entire song. So at the end of the day, as the money's coming in, it's being divided between everyone else, and you're not making mm -hmm. what people think you're making. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you guys so much. I feel like so knowledgeable, <laughs> like I can like, start a career in music. Oh, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, do you have any openings? Because I can't Collaboration, see collaboration. <laughs> after after but, you pass the test. But do you guys yeah. have any last words on like women in music and just any, any last words on the topic? Keep hustling. I support you. I think you're doing great stuff. Um, and I think, yeah, it's exciting to see women like just being themselves and doing really well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm very happy that you know women are doing well in the industry. We should be more appreciative of the women, we have. you know, doing something rather than you know trying to bring them down. How many of you have been doing? You know, just try to appreciate those and um, know that we are you know helping to raise the flag for the Nigerian women. So um, kudos to everyone who's doing good, who's pushing. It's not easy. Let's just work hard and beat these boys. Like we need like some kind of like <laughs> yeah. <girl power. laughs> yeah. Any last words? Um, I mean, collaboration is key. You mm -hmm. know, um, and although we spoke specifically about collaboration in Nigeria, we have a whole fifty-three other countries that are waiting yeah. to collaborate as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's it's really just about finding where you fit in. You know, yeah. um, on a personal level, professional level, mm -hmm. um, your best friends may not be artists that you will collaborate with, but the artists that can inspire you in other ways. You know, um, sharing knowledge on publishing, sharing knowledge on touring, sharing the things you've learned, mm -hmm. just allows everyone to grow. And mm -hmm. I think True. if those little collaborations come, mm -hmm. it will lead to everything else. So it's first having that that yeah. initial one on one, yeah. getting to know the artists, and from there anything can happen. Mm -hmm. um, and the industry is still wide open. You know, everyone is creating different sounds, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully it will continue that way. Yeah. And, and it's just about visibility, just getting the brands out there more. Yeah. But I mean, they alone are doing great jobs already. Yeah. So work over hype. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank this was you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to join the conversation, please drop a comment in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all social media platforms at Indani TV. Thank you for watching.